and we're live. Hello, everybody. What's we up? Hey, what up, Antler Queen Kel? And everybody else who's watching live right now. Um, yeah. We are back with another episode of the Antler Queens. And today we're going to be covering Yellow Jackets, episode five, Blood Hive. But before we dive into the episode itself, we just wanted to go over a couple little Yellow Jackets buzzworthy tidbits, um, starting with the fact that the music from the original score is now available on music streaming services. Um, and I think my favorite part about this is the extended version of No Return, the theme song of Yellow Jackets. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I always love when scores from TV shows come out to, to see what the titles are. Yep, absolutely. For instance, Misty Brings Tea. Yeah. Not a game. Let the darkness set us free. There <laughs> are some really solid titles in there, and I've been listening to it on Apple Music this week, so we encourage you to go out and um, get that Yellow Jacket score wherever you stream your music. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then in other exciting news, um, Antler Queen Kel had put out a little tweet about uh, <laughs> Melanie Linsky this week, and she actually replied to us. And, you know, she said, that's so sweet. Thank you. Uh, it's just nice to be in projects that people are enjoying. So, I yes, I love that you, um, you know, you mentioned her, you got a reply. And, and now, you know, the big job is going to be getting her to come on the podcast. So, you know. Yeah. You know, it's funny because like, my Twitter account's brand new and I've, I've been kind of like, not really kind of just avoiding adding many people, <laughs> and, but somehow I got both Juliette Lewis and Melanie Linsky to, <laughs> to comment or like my tweets. That's creepy. so excellent. So everybody should go and follow us um, yes. at <laughs> Queen Kel, um, at Media Melanie, and then um, our show uh, Twitter account is the Antler Queens. So make sure you connect with us and uh, see what we're doing. We put we put a couple of fun polls up on Twitter this week too. So go and yeah. uh, go and check those out. Um, and then you know one more non Yellow Jackets, but kind of in the same universe related item. Um, the Wilds, a show on Prime. Uh, season two is actually coming out on May 6th. And if you like Yellow Jackets, you will probably like The Wilds. Uh, very similar type of situation. We have teens and a plane crash. Um, there's a little bit more to it, as you'll see in the first episode. But um, we'd actually talked about doing a compare contrast episode. Um, and, you know, there's even a cast crossover with The Wilds, right? Yeah, yeah. Warren Cole. Uh, Jeff. That's right. Uh, Shelby's dad. Um, it's kind of funny because it, it's funny because he's like, you know, he's a super religious guy, but he's uh, but he's also like still a fitness freak. And <laughs> Yes. Yeah. You know, we see him talking about the celery smoothies and whatever in Yellow Jackets. And I feel like his character in the wilds would, you know, do that that same thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, if you're looking for something to watch, we recommend the wilds on Amazon Prime. And again, we might cover a little bit of that. So check it out. Um, and now why don't we dive into episode five, Blood Hive? Yeah. So um, the description for this episode is out in the wilderness, the girls ride the crimson wave and plan a dark art slumber party. Natalie and Misty tame a stallion. On, Hollywood, on Hall Halloween night, I can't talk, Shauna parties like it's 1996. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oops, there we go. Um, yes, and uh, you know, you had to put together a cute little quote graphic that we posted on our social media this week. Um, you know, that kind of sums up the episode. We have Travis saying, you know, that cabin is like the blood hive, and boy was he <laughs> right. And we will find out why as we dive in here. Yeah. In um, our first scene, uh, we open with a past timeline, and. Our, uh, both of our favorite songs from this episode uh, by Montel Jordan, This Is How We Do It. And we see the girls doing a choreographed dance. And I don't know about you, but I loved it. Oh, my God. It was awesome. And, you know, I'm sorry if I don't trust people who don't like the song. <laughs> this 
is how we do you know it. this song? I mean, it, it's like I almost got off the couch and started doing the dance moves with right? them. Like I was so into it. It was just a real, you know, another quintessential 90s music moment as we've seen so many before and yeah. adding another one to the list. I was waiting for the Cabbage Patch to, to bust out. Oh my God. <laughs> Yes, and we did see um, they were doing some Running Man and the Bart Simpson. So, mm -hmm. you know, they were incorporating some some well-known dance moves into that uh, Montel Jordan choreographed routine. And I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. It was so much fun. So much. I, I can't imagine how much fun they must have had filming that. Oh my God, it must have been such a good time. Um, yeah. And you know, they used an old school tape player and they put it in a bucket to help amplify the sound. And I think that was like a really clever MacGyvery type of move to, you know, get the music going. But um, unfortunately the music doesn't last very long. Yeah, you know, I, I had to suspend my disbelief a little bit there because there's no way they would get that kind of sound from, <laughs> from just that that amount of application amplification. But uh, but yeah, what a bummer! It, you know, the tape player dies, and Van tries to hit it, and it, but you know it doesn't work, and and then you know Mister Mister Creepy upstairs decides to to start freaking everybody out. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Some Party more pressure. Yep that that skeleton guy or spirit of him upstairs is is definitely impacting the the group. Yeah. Um, and you know, just, just a quick note for me for this episode, there were multiple instances with Nat where teen Nat, Sophie Thatcher, where I'm just so impressed with the way that she channels Juliet Lewis, oh, right? I know. Like her mannerisms, her speech. I mean, the way that she talks, her look, just the casting was just so right on with her. Um, and I'd read an article, you know, that they had talked a lot on the phone. Um, you know, they do Zoom read-throughs together and she would really try to study her mannerisms. And, you know, artistically they were on the same page and, um, you know, it's been a really collaborative effort for them. So I think they all do a great job of, of playing their older versions, but, you know, just this episode, sometimes when I hear Nat speak, I'm like, wow, she is just such an incredible actress. So anyway, yeah. little, little minor rabbit hole there, but we move on now. I noticed that a lot with uh, with Tawny Cypress and Jasmine Savoy Brown too. They're they're pretty much they're pretty in sync as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, really, they all are. Like they are yeah. all so good. Uh, just I notice these like little moments where I'm just like, wow, this could really be the same person. Like their casting is yeah. just so on point. Dead on, dead on. They did such a great job. Yes. Um, and then um, it's the next morning. We are still in the past timeline. And, you know, this scene was um, enjoyable and, and kind of funny to watch. We see Coach Ben sleeping. Um, he's got his own room, which, you know, is nice. And um, and he's got a hard on. Big, big old morning wood out of Coach Scott there. And uh, our friend Misty walks in. <laughs> you know, like just checking on him. But she starts reaching for it. Yeah. And like the look on her face was just, I mean, she was so excited. Like there was a lot of excitement in that room, if you know what I mean. And I think yeah. she, she shared in that very much. <laughs> so poor Ben. Yeah. He, he kind of wakes up and is a little horrified. Oh my God. <laughs> just slightly, just slightly. And, um, and, you know, he yells at her, you know, don't don't fucking touch me misty you know another incident where he's like man like what do i gotta do to get this girl to leave me alone so oh, poor guy yeah so that was kind of funny <laughs> um and then you know we we determine why this episode is called blood hive um nat's trying to wake jackie up everyone else is already out of bed and started their day of course jackie's mm -hmm. sleeping in and true jackie form and uh she complains she has cramps and then nat says they all do because their periods have synced up so there are hormones flying around there oh boy yeah and oh, you know i love i love the, the the first thing she says when she wakes up it's you know it's it's a little a uh, little foreboding i'm so cold <laughs> Yes, and actually there is another reference of cold in this episode, which we'll get to in a little bit, which I think was very foreshadowy, and we can touch yeah. upon that in the um, spoiler segment after mm -hmm. we're finished covering the episode. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, she's just she's just not feeling it. She kind of thinks she's the only person who has cramps, and, you know, Natalie puts her straight. But I like how she, like, 
you know, it, it shows she steps out, she eventually gets up and comes outside and it shows everybody's like, you know, doing their doing chores and everybody's being productive. And, you know, they're all dressed how you would expect them to dress. And, and Jackie's still just like looking way too put together. <laughs> yep. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> yep, her in her collared striped shirt and her typical Jackie look on her face. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she, but, you know, Mari, Mari, uh, cornered her and, and it's like, no, nope, you're not getting breakfast until you actually do something, girl. That's right. <laughs> Jen, the world does not revolve around Jackie. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But, oh God, th this was so funny. The, um, the moment with, uh, Akila and Travis. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, there are a lot of maxi pads involved in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. So she's like, you know, she's kind of, they're all using rags and, she seems to be making some like homemade maxi pads out of out of rags and and uh, you know they're they have to wash them and reuse them obviously and and they're drying out and Travis is sitting right there and um, they're soaking next to the food <laughs> and Jackie comes out and Akila says hey breakfast on the left bloody soldiers on the right don't mix them up like Travis did. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. I mean, Travis is getting fully immersed in the world of females here and there's just no escaping it. So, um, yeah, that's a mistake that, that no one wants to make when we're talking about, you know, <laughs> bloody maxi pads versus breakfast. Two very yeah. distinct things. That was great. I love tequila for that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was, that was a good line. I enjoyed that as well. Um, and then in the next scene, we see Jackie going down to the lake and she mm -hmm. sees Lottie who is in the lake in her pajamas and it's a little bit creepy. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Really weird. Just completely dressed, standing right in the middle of the lake, just like she's in a daze. And like Jackie, it almost seems like Jackie kind of breaks her out of it because she asks her, isn't she cold? And she says, actually, yeah, I thought it would be warmer. So it's a really weird moment. I don't know what was going on there exactly. It, it like is. It's like she was transfixed on something or she I was having an out-of-body experience or, or something. But, you know, it's another reference we get to, you know, temperature, temperature is becoming something that we are foreshadowing a little bit. And again, we'll mm -hmm. touch on that a little bit later. But yeah, that was kind of a weird moment. Like it, sh it's like she didn't realize she was even in the lake. Like she snapped out of a trance or something. It was bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Jackie, Jackie needs to start working out, I think, a little bit more at camp because uh, – she seems to be, you know, she goes and gets her water and she's, she seems to be struggling with that bucket. God, I mean, yeah, you'd think that they'd be kind of like in shape for nationals and stuff. Although we can cut them some slack because they are in the wilderness and starving. And so, starving. Yeah, that's, you true. know, that, minor, that's a good minor point. detail. <laughs> but, but yeah, pick up the slack a little here, Jackie. Keep it going. You know, the lazier you are, it's not going to help that muscle mass any. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely not. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, she makes it back to camp and some of the girls are kind of looking at her and snickering and, uh, Shauna comes up and, uh, you know, she offers to help her with, which was nice. And Jackie's like, no, I got it. And, uh, she asks her, Jackie asks Shauna why she's so chipper. And she says, don't you have a blood sacrifice between your legs too? And, uh, Shauna says she's late this month, which, um, she says could be due to the stress from the plane crash, which that's another thing you would think that mu that multiple, I, I don't know, maybe because they're young and healthy, maybe they don't have, maybe their body doesn't have to bounce back as much, but. Like, right. But you would think it would take more time to get synced up, right? Like maybe like two cycles or something. I don't know. I would but. think that like it, I, my first thought was that I bet at least half of those girls are missing like a couple of periods. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, the stress, the lack of food, I mean, yeah. all of that stuff. This is a very traumatic situation. So it seems a lot of them are very regular with their cycle, however, <laughs> and now they are all synced up. And, um, you know, Jackie says, well, lucky you're a virgin or we'd really have to worry. Um, and of course, the rest of us know that Shauna has, in fact, slept with Jackie's boyfriend, Jeff, on multiple occasions and mm -hmm. even threatened him with, you know, making sure she doesn't <laughs> get pregnant. But here we 
are. And I think, you know, all of us are thinking, oh boy, she's pregnant. I mean, that was obviously my first thought, I feel. Um, yeah. What about what about you? Were you like, okay, she's having a baby or could be stressed? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely thought. I mean, I, you know, when she said that, I was like, oh, that's, you know, that's a good line because that would be typical. But, um, but yeah, oh no, I definitely thought she was, I figured she was pregnant right away. Yeah. What a then, crappy um, place to be pregnant. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, seriously. Um, and then after the scene, we move to a present timeline. Uh, we see Shauna texting Adam and um, as she is burning Callie's bagel in the toaster. And then they have an interaction, Shauna and her daughter, Callie. Yeah. You know, I love this because she's, she's just standing in, um, in the kitchen texting Adam. And then Callie walks in text, texting on her phone and they're both just like, they're both just texting in the kitchen, which it's kind of a, kind of a funny moment. But uh, she was like, Callie walks in and looks at the toaster. She's like, oh, no worries. I was trying to cut back on carbs. So she, so Shauna burned Callie's breakfast. Oops. <laughs> but good. Good for her. Callie, uh, Callie can buy her own breakfast. Exactly. I mean, she's coming in to like ask, you know, for a pre-off for an Uber for the evening and says, don't mm -hmm. cancel it because I'm going into the city with some friends. Um, of course, it is Halloween and they kind of argue a little bit. And, you know, Sean is asking Callie to stay home and help her hand out candy for the trick-or-treaters. And um, this was my favorite 90s moment. Callie, oh, says, yeah. Callie says, I'm sorry, my idea of a good time doesn't involve sitting on a porch in some 90s character costume that nobody even recognized. <laughs> and then Shauna says, the people who matter recognize Daria, okay? <laughs> and, you know, I didn't even really watch Daria. I knew it was a thing, but I just love the continued 90s references, and this was no exception. And, you know, as always, oh, yeah. Melanie Linsky delivers the line just so perfectly. Um, so I think I think that was a, a fun little nod. And, you know, Kelly, like, totally calling her mom out for liking the 90s. Come on, let the woman oh, yeah. have her 90s, please. I, I loved this moment. Actually, when, when I heard this line, I'm like, I'm going to have to show this scene to my husband because he'll get a kick out of it because I've probably said that exact line before, but about something else. Because yeah. I always like go for the obscure, uh, the obscure Halloween costumes and, and, you know, I'm a big fan of nostalgia. <laughs> like yeah. I dressed up for PJ Harvey for Halloween one year and, um, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know how many people had any idea who I was supposed to be. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. I've definitely done some 80s Halloween. I was uh, Strawberry Shortcake and She-Ra one year. Nice. I don't know about the 90s ones. But um, but anyway, we should all appreciate a throwback Halloween costume. Even Hell yeah. Even if don't recognize definitely. it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that Shauna dresses as Daria. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Super cute. Um, yeah. And then, you know, Shauna mentions that she won't be home tonight because she has book club. Yeah. Second book club mention. That's right. That's right. And, and speaking <laughs> of book club, we actually have, um, there's no book club merch in our store. Uh, mm -hmm. You can get that at antlerqueenspodcast.com. Um, and back to the show now. Uh, Jeff comes in and says, do you really need to do this book club thing tonight? And Shauna says, yes, Jeff, I have to. And then how sweet was it of Jeff? You know? I know. Oh, I loved that. I, I loved this. Yeah. yeah. He, he was like, yeah, we'll go together. Let's let's make it a date. That was so adorable. It was adorable. And actually, you know what? I think I might change my MVP moment to Jeff for trying to support Shauna in her book club. I think that's like really nice husbanding. Clearly he's trying to maybe take some of the therapy they've been doing and apply it to, you know, spending more time together. So I thought that was really cute. And obviously, you know, we know there's no book club and, um, <laughs> and, you know, they get into like, what is the book about? And, and Shauna says, <laughs> I love this. We're reading the girl in the, train window and you know really i'm just gonna try to avoid the side eye from other moms it's basically the opposite of a sausage fest so a clam then, bake a clam bake jeff says the book club is a clam bake and i've, I've never heard that like i've heard sausage fest before i've not heard clam bake before am i missing out was this a thing so you haven't heard it either okay no i have not okay I haven't. Right. I'm curious if, if other people use that term or not, or if, you know, 
Jeff Sadecki has coined this new phrase. But anyway, <laughs> um, Shauna is able to talk him out of going. You know, he doesn't want to attend this clam bake, if you will. And um, so they decide, you know, Shauna will go to book club and Jeff will not. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Jeff is uh, Jeff is staying home. He doesn't feel like reading the the girl in in the train window. <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. Definitely not. But you know, I I had to. I got such a kick out of the next scene because it goes to Natalie in her motel room, and she's just lounging around on her bed watching UFO files, wearing her Pink Floyd T shirt and, and fishnets. Like, I you know that's. That's something I do all the time, just lounge around wearing fishnets. <laughs> right. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, you know, I'm more of like a sweatpants person. So yeah. I just can't picture myself lounging around in fishnets. But hey, you know, we all have our own thing. And apparently that's hers. So hey, you um, know, whatever the works. Look worked for her, right? Old t-shirt yeah. and fishnets. Hey, maybe that's a Halloween costume. I don't know. Maybe. Ooh, ooh. Who knows? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but uh but yeah, so Kevin calls and um and says Travis's toxicology report was clean. And poor guy, he asks if he, like he starts asking if they can hang out again and she pretty much just hangs up on him. Poor guy, like going out of his way to help her, like, you know, going a little out of the realm of his job and getting access to the toxicology reports. And she doesn't really like thank him. I mean, it's kind of rude. You know, he wants to go out with her and she hangs up. So typical Nat, though. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I, I love, uh, you know, she picks up the phone <laughs> and it shows her scrolling through her phone and she calls do not pick up. And it happens oh to be Misty. <laughs> That's so funny. Like, what a way to store Misty's contact. And I imagine they each have a funny contact stored in for Misty. So I'd, I have a feeling a lot really. of people have Misty stored in their phone as do not pick up. Yep. <laughs> or psycho or, you know, crazy person. Who knows? All different things. Um, yeah. But anyway, um, she calls Nat. I mean, she calls um, Misty. Mm hmm. And I, I loved her response. So first of all, she's Misty's wearing her Halloween scrubs with her her furry uh, cat ears and tail. And um, she, I love she picks it up. She sees Nat's calling. She picks it up and just goes, "Who is this, please?" <laughs> oh my god! So oh my funny. God. <laughs> and uh, you know, Natalie starts asking, um, "Hey, don't you have a guy? You have a guy that uh, that can." hack into people's emails right and um <laughs> she's like i still haven't heard an apology yet because <laughs> mm -hmm. she's still bitter that like they're not risoli and isles i as, know she you know, really Nat wanted to be risoli and isles yeah so she's pretty bummed out about that but i guess you know she ends up forgiving her and um you know they they want to hack kevin because nat actually wants to see the entire file on uh travis's death so that's their their convo right there and yeah. um, the next scene's kind of funny, too. There's a couple of um, younger girls that walk into the room. Misty's in, and it's Halloween. So, obviously, the care facility is doing some kind of, like, trick-or-treating event. And, um, you know, Misty's not happy to be there. She encourages the two girls to say trick-or-treat to the poor elderly woman laying in the bed who is virtually unresponsive. And um, she holds out the candy, and then she shuts the power on the power strip off. And all of a sudden, this super loud, like, code blue thing comes on. And it's like, code blue, code blue, doctor, doctor, come and help us. And the girls <laughs> run out screaming. You know, just another example of Misty's very interesting sense of humor, you know? Like, she's got this, like, this thing with death and making people suffer. And granted, the woman was not suffering. It was more the girls that she may have shocked and scarred for life. But, um, you know, she's always doing something. Always up to something, that Misty. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, I got a kick out of that. That was pretty funny. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, not cool in reality, but pretty hilarious. Yep, yep. 
Yes, absolutely. And um, and then we quickly hop back to one little past timeline scene. Um, we see Shauna is using the restroom in the woods and she's feeling her boobs. So obviously, you know, another clue that she's probably pregnant, probably not period related. And, um, yeah. and you know, she probably realizes, shit, I better do something because everyone's going to start wondering. So she actually, you know, dips a rag in deer blood and then mm. Thaisa catches her. So... Yeah, I, I wonder, like, I wonder what Thaisa was, was thinking at that exact moment, you know? Like, like why are you faking a period, right? I, I feel like she's pretty smart, and it probably clicked, you know, pretty quickly, um, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Um, then we cut back to the, the present, and um, we're at Thaisa's house. And Thais is a little stressed out because she's trailing pretty, pretty heavy in the suburbs. And um, they kind of, you know, they have this nice, sweet, affectionate moment. And Simone is is kind of buttering her up a little bit and, and they start kissing. And then now this is where I get confused. Biscuit starts barking. Mm -hmm. Was Biscuit actually barking? Oh, you know, I didn't question if Biscuit was not barking. That's interesting. So you're saying that you think that maybe Thaisa was imagining Biscuit barking and he wasn't really barking. Yeah, because Simone didn't seem to notice anything. And Thaisa pulled away and looked at the dog. And then and Simone was just like, what, babe, what's wrong? Right. And I don't know what Biscuit would have been barking at. Although but, um, Thaisa did hear some howling, right? So is yeah. it possible that Thaisa and Biscuit heard the barking and not Simone, but, but again, Simone doesn't react. So that, that's very interesting. I did not even question that. You were so observational. I love it. <laughs> I, I catch some, I catch things every once in a while, but yeah, yeah. so it, it could have been just, you know, she started hearing howling and then just transferred it to the dog and, you know, like right. imagine the dog was barking at her, but hmm. she looks out the window and sees a wolf. Yes, and, and it's not the first hallucination that we've seen various characters see, and it's not the first time we've seen Thaisa hallucinate a wolf either. Mm -hmm. And this wolf doesn't look, you know, I want to I want to point out, this is the second time we've seen a wolf in relation to Thaisa. Mm -hmm. And in both instances so far, the wolves don't seem overly threatening. Um the first time the wolf was walking away from her and was kind of hanging its head down. And, and this time the, the wolf also looks pretty submissive. Um, but she walks out, she walks outside, she grabs a knife, walks out and there's no wolf, nope. but she sees something else. She sure she, does. Uh, sees a giant word spill in red paint on their door. And it looks very creepy and very much like blood dripping down. So, mm -hmm. you know, red paint was obviously a very intentional color. And like, where did this come from? What does spill mean? Do they mean like spill the details on what happened out there in the wilderness? Um, probably, right? That's what I assume. Yeah, this uh, this was a very important word throughout the entire episode. Um, it's We learned from last week that Bill Bathurst supporters have this taunt that they keep, you know, they keep saying spill, spill, spill um, in regards to Thaisa. But, uh, you know, it could mean a few different things, but that's, you know, the word spill is written on Thaisa's door. So that's what we're supposed to be thinking right now. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it gets a little confusing though, um, as we will find out in a bit. But uh, first we're going to go Back to camp in the past. Back to 96, baby. And back to Jackie slacking off again. <laughs> like listening to music on her Walkman. I mean, yeah. like, how bad is her self-awareness? Like, I mean, get it together. Like, do something. Please, Jackie, please. Yeah. And, you know, like, plus, obviously, she should be doing something more productive. But the other thing that really bothered me about this is... Everyone wants to listen to music. It's not like they have an unlimited supply of batteries. Like, take the headphones out. Yeah. Just, you know, put the volume up and, like, let everybody listen to some music. <laughs> yes, there is definitely some entitlement going on with Jackie. That is 100% sure. Um, yeah. 
And then we see Shauna returning to camp and she's showing off her bloody rag, which we know is deer blood and mm-hmm. says, thanks for jinxing me. Um, and then Jackie starts to have trouble with her batteries Poor Jackie. And um, <laughs> Shauna pulls her aside and has a talk with her. And I think this is an important moment, you know, for their friendship. It shows that, you know, Shauna clearly cares about Jackie. Um, she's trying to show her how to butcher a deer and Jackie's struggling. And, you know, Shauna kind of goes off a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, Jackie's just not taking it. I mean, she's struggling with it, but she's also just not taking it seriously and she doesn't want anything to do with it. And, and Shauna just says, well, I, I don't know how to help you. You're not, you need to start chipping in because people are noticing that you're not. And um, Jackie just kind of has a really defeatist attitude. Um, like she just, she's no good out there. And she's, she's out of her element. And she doesn't have the same influence that she used to have. And she's been kind of realizing that. And um, she just, she doesn't know what to do with herself. She says she's not good at it. I think she has a lot of self-doubt that prevents her from even trying to be to be adept at anything. Um, so I don't think, I mean, I do think she's got a lot of entitlement and selfishness issues. But I also think she probably is just has a lot of self-doubt. That's true, too. Sometimes people put on a really good facade and, you know, exude this like confidence and this, you know, persona. But I mean, really inside, she could be very insecure and self-conscious. And and that does become kind of clear here. So agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. She doesn't want to be put in a position where she looks completely incompetent because she doesn't want to lose everyone's respect. Yet no. she's still losing respect anyway. Still by Still losing respect like <laughs> so much on the daily. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, but yeah, people are noticing that she's not chipping in and, you know, Jackie's like, you know, you're, you're kind of turning into a badass here. And, you know, she's kind of, she wishes that she could get more into it, but she's just, you know, Shauna's like, she's kind of showing she's a little impressed by Shauna's kind of taking over and, and, uh, becoming an adept survivor. And, um, and Shauna deserves that credit. I mean, she really has stepped it up, you know, so yeah. that was a, a good, um, good shout out by Jackie, you know, recognizing that. This was a, this was a, this was kind of a cute moment though. Shauna shares with her that um, she said, remember when uh, one of their friends had broken her arm right before they were supposed to go to a water park and Jackie, like, this is, you know, this shows that Jackie's not entirely selfish. <laughs> Jackie, Shauna reminds Jackie that Jackie told the girl who broke her arm that if she shared their her Percocet, they would go crash bingo at the Elks Lodge instead. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, not leaving anybody out. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Pretty cute. But, yeah, she, you know, she was... That's a situation where she was trying to involve everybody and make the best out of a crappy situation with their friend not being able to go to the water park. And Sean is reminding her of this. And and uh, Jackie's like, wow, Shipman, is that a pep talk? <laughs> yeah. And um, she's like, yeah, it's, you know, that's not usually my thing, but. I guess it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, she nailed it. She nailed it. And then, you know, there's a really cute moment where um, Shauna gives Jackie her necklace back and says, you know, you're basically the best. And then they share a hug. So that was a cute moment. And uh, then we are back to the present timeline again at Thais's house. Um, and they're returning from trick or treating. So, you know, we're uh, Halloween in the past, we're Halloween in the present. And, um, some predictable costumes. Um, we see Sammy and Biscuit as a sandwich and hot dog. So like those... we're, I, I, you know, I'm surprised that Simone wasn't dressed like a Sim and Thaisa wasn't dressed like a bow tie or something. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Do they wear, do Sammy and Biscuit wear these same costumes every year? <laughs> I mean, maybe, you know, Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then, um, you know, the moment's kind of broken up. We see Ty checking the mail and she sees uh, Phil Bathurst postcard, um, you know, mm-hmm. more postcards figuring in here. And the back says, Taisa Turner is hiding from the truth. So, you know, the timing of the postcard delivery with the spill painted outside is interesting. Um, and then she takes Sammy's costume off, goes into his room and hangs it up. And um, what does she see? under the bed 
she sees a can of red paint under the bed. Mm. And I, um, yeah, so that's pretty interesting. I think that that word was a little high though for, um, it was written up a little high, I think, for uh, for Sammy to get to. Like there's no way he could have reached that. And yeah. I mean, like how is he unsupervised for that long to make it outside with a can of red paint and, yeah. you know, paint it on the door? Like Simone's a pretty attentive parent, even if, you know, Thaisa may not always be. so. I, it's highly doubtful that Sammy did that. So again, it's, you know, presenting this big mystery surrounding Sammy and, you know, it's planting some seeds of doubt here, I think mm -hmm. for viewers, especially, you know, us, as we just noted. You know, I, I had, I had one uh, funny commentary on Sammy's room. I had to watch the scene like three times before I could figure out what the hell was on his wall. It was like a tiger, a tiger face or a tiger mask or something. It looked, all I could see when I saw, when I looked at it was the white part of the tiger's face. And I swear to God, I thought it was a bra hanging on his wall. I'm like, oh come on, God. I know Sam is a little <laughs> young to be a player. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Or Interesting. Girls bras on his wall. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. I wonder what the set designers had in mind with that. Um, <laughs> interesting. Not a bra, not a bra. Yeah, not a bra. It was, it was um, a face. <laughs> and then we're still, um, we move away from Ty's house. We're still in the present timeline and we see um, Shauna and Adam at a club. And it looks like kind of, you know, a Halloween rave or something. Um, mm -hmm. Oops, that was the wrong one. Um, but they look like, uh, you know, Adam looks like he's excited to be there. Shauna, <laughs> maybe not as much. You know, she's a little self-conscious and... Um, you know, Shauna says, I look like I fell off a Fifty Shades of Grey bus tour, um, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, they yeah. were going to put masks on. So, you know, decided not to. Didn't want to look Fifty Shades of Grey. So, um, you know, so I thought that was funny. And I thought it was, you know, really, um, you know, Adam was being, you know, supportive of her. And I thought that was really cute. Um, yeah. And then we move back to 1996 again. And we see Natalie and Travis hunting. Mm hmm. Yeah, and uh, he tries to shoot an animal and and misses, but uh, Natalie starts kind of ribbing him, ribbing him a little bit. She says, "Yeah, giving up makes a lot of sense. You're a little too far behind to ever catch up." And and Travis, he's such an asshole. It's like it's not my fault. Your lady blood is scaring all the prey away. <laughs> And that's like, oh, you went there. And he's like, went there. I'm surrounded on all sides. That cabin is like the blood hive. Yeah. And yes. I, I love the way she says the next line. She's like, what's the matter, Travis? Are you scared of our menses? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love that they're so like open and upfront with period talk, which is something that needs to be normalized. You know, I feel like it's always kind of a weird thing, but they really attacked the issue head on in blood hive. So yeah. Um, so it's good to see like a kind of funny, like normalized conversation about it. I appreciated that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yes. definitely. But, uh, you know, Natalie asks him if, if, hey, if he shouldn't the smell of blood attract animals anyway. <laughs> and, uh, and Travis is like, yeah, predators, but didn't hunter gatherers used to hide their women in huts? <laughs> so, mm. they wouldn't, so they wouldn't uh, ruin the hunt. And Nat has a great line here. She's like, more like because men needed something to blame their failures on. <laughs> right? Hey, I'm with that. I'm with that. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Good observation. Yeah. I love that. Um, and then we go back to the present again, and we see Misty and Nat at her motel um, mm -hmm. using a secret knock, which is kind of funny. Um, mm -hmm. And Misty brings Nat an owl aroma diffuser with her signature scent, uh, how do you say ylang ylang? Is that how you say it? It's it's pronounced lang lang, but lang -lang. I, I love that she pronounces the the y in it. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know I've seen it written a million times. I didn't know how it was pronounced, but lang lang and gardenia. So yeah, you know, she definitely seems like Misty seems like a gardenia kind of person. She does. She does. Um, and, you know, she says that her email hacker contact is being a bit of a D-bag um, since finding out he was stealing a police file and wants to meet in person to discuss the terms of the exchange um, of the files. And they only know each other by their citizen detective names. And so they decide um, Nat and Misty are going to go meet him that night. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then so join. we're back again at Ty and Simone's house. Mm-hmm. 
And, uh, you know, I one thing I, I noticed about the scene, they're confronting Sammy about the paint that was under his bed. And I just, I, I noticed all of the candy. I just thought it was so funny. Like all the candy was just spread out on the table face down so that you wouldn't see any brand names. But oh, that's funny. A avoid having to pay for the sponsorship, whatever. No, no product placement here. <laughs> right. But they, but they needed the uh, they needed the candy all spread out on the table because <laughs> they ask him about the uh, they ask him about the paint and he swears he didn't do it. And then it was the bad one, the lady in the tree. Um, and Thaisa accuses him of lying and <laughs> he just shoves all the candy off the table and storms off. So it was just it was funny because it was like they had to they wanted to avoid product placement. So yeah. they had all the candy face down, but they wanted to have it all spread out of the table for the dramatic effect. <laughs> yep. Okay, smart. Good good compromise there. They got what they needed for the scene and they didn't have to pay the extra. So Yeah. <laughs> Very smart. Yes. And uh, we then move to another present day scene again with Matt, uh, Nat and Misty and um, they're at the restaurant getting to meet the citizen detective. Mm -hmm. And um, we see them siphoning gas out of a gas tank into a thermos. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. And uh, I, Misty's, Misty's concern about this is hilarious. She's not concerned about what they're going to do with the gasoline. Her concern is, is this going to work? I mean, most restaurants won't let you bring in drinks or food or anything. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> and that's like, I don't know, Misty, you tell me. I've still got that rifle in the trunk. And and Misty's like, well, I don't know how they we'd get that into the restaurant. <laughs> yes. Always an interesting interaction between these two. Yes. Um, and then they enter and they approach Stallion 99, who is the citizen detective that they're meeting with. Um, and by the way, uh, Misty's citizen detective name is african gray so mm -hmm. I, I think that was kind of funny and um obviously the guy's kind of upset you know like they're super secret code names and you know misty's here bringing somebody to their meeting which obviously stallion 99 did not appreciate um and then we see you know natalie had a pretty funny line in this scene <laughs> oh my god i love this line uh he uh he says he wants in on the operation um and she uh he says she said uh the guy's dead he's none of your goddamn business so just give us the file and he says what's it worth to you uh misty pours the thermos of gasoline onto his lap and natalie says if the question is is me lighting your dick on fire and going to jail worth me getting my hands on that file fucking try me <laughs> Oh my god the way she delivers that line though is just great i mean anytime we're talking about setting dicks on fire like the delivery should be spot on and you know nat of course nailed it um yeah. and it's funny they're leaving the restaurant and you know nat says to misty you should ask that guy out you two you two seem to have so much in common and <laughs> i mean she's right you know two citizen detectives like you know i i mean she's she's right she's playing matchmaker here for misty how mm -hmm. sweet yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, but so we go back to the past and we um, Ty and Van are making out. They are getting it on. Yes, they are. Now, have you have you seen the ship name for them yet? I don't know if uh, I don't know if they actually have a, an official fandom ship name yet. I don't know, but just, you know, while we're on ship names, mine for um, Nat and Misty is Nasty. Yes. Um, nasty. <laughs> so let's go with that for them. But, um, you know, I see in the notes here, uh, Tynessa. I like Tynessa. Tynessa. I think that's cute. I think that totally works. Um, yeah. And then their little makeout sesh is interrupted by Mari screaming. And mm. um, there's a little activity. Yeah, she uh, she runs out of the cabin screaming and she's like, get it off, get it off, get it off me. And uh, she said she was standing under the trap door and something crawled down the back of her shirt. But like the girls were checking her out and there's there's nothing there. And um, and everyone's like, maybe it was the ghost. Oh my God. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Jackie gets a little bit she gets a little moment of glory back here because she suggests a seance. And the girls are just like, all right, whatever, Jackie. But um, they come around and Jackie looks really proud of herself that she 
you know, she was able to exert some influence. <laughs> She's event planning seems like something right in her wheelhouse. Yeah. And, um, you know, so apparently they're going to have a seance. This should mm -hmm. be interesting. Yeah. Um, and, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, um, we then go back to the present again. And mm -hmm. um, Adam and Shauna are in the club. And... Um, all of a sudden, Shauna sees something. She sees Jackie standing yeah. next to a skeleton, which is interesting. Um, <laughs> but yes. uh, we, you know, we we know Jackie, if she was still alive, would would not be in her soccer uniform. It would be a lot older. But um, she follows her. She just takes off after her and catches up, and she realizes it's Kelly. Oh my God! How creepy! Ugh. Wearing Jackie's uniform. <laughs> yep. And I mean, there's fake blood on it, which yes. let's face it. I mean, that's a little intense given, oh. you know, Jackie's obviously not with them anymore. So, whoa, oh, Callie, God. whoa. I, it's so offensive. So, you know, it was because of this that Callie got my my superlative spot this week for most likely to get slapped at the Academy Awards for her questionable humor. <laughs> Oh, yes, that is solid. Of course, we're coming off the big slap, you know, by Will Smith and Chris Rock, the slap heard around the world. And uh, apparently we're putting Kelly Sadecki in that same category with Will Smith. And I don't think that's too far off. She's definitely the queen of snark and, you know, trying to dominate her mom, just like Will Smith dominated um, Chris Rock. Oh, man. Like, I just, well, she thought it was her mom's uniform. She did. Um, so to be fair, she wasn't purposely putting on her mom's dead best friend's uniform and putting blood on it. So, you know, I mean, yeah. I guess if we're cutting some slack, there's some slack to be cut for Callie, I guess. But still, it's I think she did. She wore that uniform because it's the 25th anniversary. So it's kind you know, they're kind of topical. And so she she wore it. It's still, you know, even though her mom's still very much alive. It's still really offensive. I think it's offensive. I would never, I mean, you know, if I, yeah, she should have just left it in the closet. There are a thousand other things. I mean, she's making fun of her mom for, you know, dressing up like Daria. And here she is dressing up like a 90s soccer player, right? So, like, not that far off. Just Yeah, saying. like, I mean, she's making light of this horrible traumatic experience that Shauna went through. Which is funny because, um, you know, she... We'll get into it later, but, you know, Callie sort of gets a little sympathetic a little bit later on. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's an awkward scene. Adam approaches to see what's going on <laughs> and Callie sees him and is like, whoa. Because he puts her arm around her and I think Callie's picking up on like the nonverbal cues there thinking, wow, mom's got a boyfriend, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um. It's a little she, awkward. Very awkward. Um, Kelly says she's high on Molly and, um, I, I love that <laughs> and Shauna's like, she's like, what is, she's like ecstasy mom. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she just drags her off and, um, she's like, I'm taking you somewhere to sober up. Yep. Yep. Solid and, uh, mom moment. And she doesn't flip out, which is good because her daughter's on drugs. So, you know, you want to try to keep it together a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, we shift over to another present timeline. We see Ty and Simone. Um, you know, Simone's kind of telling Ty, like, look, since you've been in this race, you've been, you know, getting worse, you're losing weight, you're exhausted, Sammy's missing the mom he used to know. Um, and, you know, she's not telling her to drop out of the race, but, um, you know, she doesn't want Ty to have any regrets. However, Ty decides to drop out of the race anyway. So, you know, they, they seem to come to a conclusion here. Yeah, yeah, she says she'll make an announcement in the morning. Yep. So it's, you know, she's been kind of absent in their lives. And, I, you know, it's starting to take a toll on, on her. And yes, yes, a major toll. I mean, clearly, like, we can see the signs of stress, you know, with Ty. And there's a lot going on in their family dynamics, so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and then we uh, we go back to the past. And I love this. Misty brings Ben some tea for the swelling in his leg. 
Oh my God. I love it. I love it. She's so good with the word choice. Like, you know, I mean, the swelling, um, you know, and then of course we had like the squirting that was going on, you know, in, in one of the episodes. So, you know, and then we had the deep blue something singing while relieving the bowel scene. So there's always something like really interesting happening with Misty and I love her word choice there. That was like totally spot on. Yeah. And um, we see Jackie setting up for the seance with Shauna. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of my favorite lines here, um, you know, Jackie's like, again, like she's in like event planner mode. She's all excited. You know, she suggests the seance. They all go for it. They're setting up the candles and, you know, Shauna moves it away from the symbol on the floor and Jackie's like, yeah, but like, it's very seancey, you know? So, mm -hmm. I mean, and she's right. It is pretty seancey seance but whew, I don't know if I would have stuck the candle right on the symbol if we're having a seance and we know that there's weird things happening but you know that's just I would me. not be having a seance there in the first place <laughs> right right like, I, I don't mean, even believe in that stuff necessarily <laughs> but, yeah I mean they could have played like truth or dare like there's some things that they probably you know probably could have played instead but um but they chose a yeah. seance so you know we're, we'll see where that goes mm -hmm. um we have Nat and Travis are still out hunting and, um, you know, Travis, I guess the gun is empty because Travis took out the bullets to try to be funny. Yeah, because they're they're keeping score. They're kind of like in a contest so who can shoot the most animals. And um, yeah, yeah, he, he stole the bullets and he does this little move where, you know, he's like, he's trying to, it's like he's doing a magic trick. <laughs> and Natalie's like, Oh my God, are you seriously doing magic right now? You do know that girls are not into that, right? I, I love his reaction. He's like, wait, so are you telling me that when I wasn't doing magic, you were into it? Mm, reading between the lines a little bit there, Trav. I like that. And, um, and then we see them kiss, which, you know, I think we've all been waiting for that to happen. So that was a nice, you know, little moment between them. Yeah. Traddley, I think is a good ship name for them. Ooh, Traddley. Traddley. I like that. Very yeah. nice. We need to make a list um, and, and post these all, I feel like. Yeah. We, we need we need names for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. And um, then we move back to the present again, and we are at Nat's motel room. Yeah, this scene was weird. Um, they're looking at the, the autopsy and crime scene photos that they got from Stallion 99. And Misty notices some marks in the photos and um, she thinks they look like wax. So she puts all the photos together and draws lines connecting the marks. And I don't think anybody, like it, just from looking at the fan reactions online, I think everyone was really confused by this scene. I was really confused. I'm thinking like, how on earth could you pick up these little marks and connect the dots like that? You know, I mean, and it's yeah. literally connecting the dots. Like in my mind, I'm like, well, she has to have something to do with it because no normal person, even if you're like the best citizen detective of all time, yeah, is going to come up with that. I mean, it seems a little crazy, right? Yeah. I, I, I kind of am thinking that this might be a, a big red herring because I, I'm having a really hard time believing that Misty is behind anything right now. And right, um, right. I, I like, it's like she wants to be involved because she doesn't want to be left out, but that doesn't mean that she's, you know, an accomplice to all this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, besides she was like, she was with Natalie the whole time. Um, on the, I mean, it took a while to drive up to New Hampshire. So it's, I don't think she had anything to do with this, but it just, this makes her look really suspicious, which tells me it was probably just a big red herring and, and maybe it's not really supposed to make that much sense. But yeah, it just seems impossible that she would connect, that she would make that connection so quickly. I just want to say like, Misty would be a great survivor contestant for the puzzle challenges because that is some next level puzzle solving right there. And my MVP for the episode <laughs> would be, um, or actually, no, I'm sorry. My most likely to, um, would be Misty, you know, crushing a survivor challenge puzzle because oh, of yeah. her I can see that. incredible citizen detective skills here. So. Yeah. And, you know, and she'll chop off a leg, like, you know, without a second thought too. So 
I think she, I think Misty would, would take it all on Survivor. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, you know, she can help people clear their bowels with her singing. Yeah. Um, she can help with like squirting various <laughs> things. Um, I mean, you know, she's, she's full of, of skills. So she's yeah. a good Survivor tribe mate. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes. And she'll get you high as fuck too. Yes, she will. Those magic <laughs> mushrooms. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so then we um, we go back to Kelly and Shauna, who are just like out, you know, some sitting on a on a bench at some fast food place, eating food outside. And um, Kelly's like, "So is that your lover?" And uh, you know, she she says she comments that he's pretty hot, but she does have that whole yellow jackets thing going on for her. And, um, you know, which, which also is kind of offensive to, you know, not as offensive as wearing the uniform, but. Right. Cause I mean, it's a trauma, you know, like she's kind of turning it into like, Oh, you're, you know, a, a celebrity because of this. And yes, that might be true, but also it was an incredibly scarring and traumatic experience on so many levels for all of them. Um, yeah. you know, so it is a little bit insensitive of Callie, but she is a teenager. So, you know, mm -hmm. teens, yeah. be teens, but still insensitive. Callie seems to yeah. have that as kind of a specialty. Yeah. But, you know, Shauna is just like, he doesn't know anything about that. And Callie just kind of insinuates that she's being naive because she's like, does he know your name? Like, does he have the internet? I mean, mm -hmm. He, anyone can Google you and find out like you would think that Shauna would have thought about that already, but um, it's I, what's really interesting is, you know, it takes a lot to do something as offensive and insensitive as where you're, where the, your mom's dead best friend's uniform um, and connected to a horrible tragedy that they went through. But then she's just like, suddenly it becomes really sympathetic and is talking about everything that her mom went through. And she's like, I know you're not fine. And, and um, it's so terrible. It's so awful that you had to go through that. It is. I don't she, know if she was trying to be manipulative or she was being sincere. I don't know. Because she's kind of like, you know, you and you and dad never talk about Jackie. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I think that, intuitively she's got to know that you know there's there's more to it but she is a very manipulative person so you know what is her agenda here yeah but i mean she seems sincere she does it, was, it just does. seems kind of out of left field knowing her personality yeah yeah exactly um and then we finally get to the seance scene we move back to 96 in the cabin um jackie's putting deer blood and dirt on everybody's heads mm -hmm. um a classic witch recipe allegedly mm -hmm. um you know we see uh shauna is blindfolded and she's kind of like using a knife as a, a pendulum to you know get the answers that they're asking um and they're asking some kind of funny questions right yeah and i i first i love that she um you know that she's having so much fun with this she's like because she's acting as the me she's acting as the medium for the uh for the dead hunter guy who's i don't know if they found out his name is jacques or if they've just named him jacques but jacques. uh she uh she said it is i jacques and then she she clears her throat and lowers her voice she's like jacques <laughs> <laughs> And so then cool. they start asking, like, oh, did OJ do it? Did Principal, is Principal Berzonski screwing Miss DeWine? Would they mm -hmm. have won nationals? And actually the answer to that was no, they would not have won nationals. So I think yeah. they were all slightly bummed for a minute. And then they're like, oh, fuck it. We're out here in the wilderness. Doesn't matter now anyway. Yeah. Um, and then we see there are a couple people who are not participating in the seance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Laura Lee and Thaisa and the guys are all downstairs. And, um, Laura Lee starts flipping through a Cessna book and uh, she, Thaisa is just kind of looking at her like she's crazy. And she says, my grandpa used to fly a Cessna and he could barely write his own name. It can't be that hard. <laughs> I mean, hey, good point. She did know how to at least get into the plane and like start it up. So yeah, base she, level al knowledge. she also almost killed Jackie, Jackie yeah. and Van. But... Good, good point. Good point. <laughs> valid, valid. But you know, hey, it's, it's, possibly a lifeline so you know get on her for taking some initiative <laughs> yeah um, but Thaisa asks Ben she's like coach are you listening to this 
And he says no. And it's just like, you see him, he's just not looking like he's feeling so hot. Yeah, no, Coach Ben is not not looking great there, not looking great. Yeah. Um, and then we actually see Javi deciding to go upstairs and see why the girls are laughing so much. Uh, they're talking about some girl's boobs being fake. And then, you know, Misty asks if the person that she likes likes her back. Um, mm-hmm. And the pendulum actually says yes, which, <laughs> which is very surprising to me. I was not expecting a yes answer on that. Right, because we obviously know it's Ben. <laughs> yep, yep, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and then, you know, the seance is continuing. And then, um, you know, Javi asks if they're all going to die out there. And you know, the pe- they're having such a good time. And then he's just got to be a Buzzkill, buzzkill, right? Um, yeah. and, and, you know, the pendulum then swings in a figure eight or an infinity symbol. And, um, you know, the the mood in the room is severely brought down after mm. that. So, um, and then, yeah. then, like, some weird shit starts happening. You know, we see an exterior view of the cabin. Mm-hmm. This totally reminded me of Evil Dead. Um, the way it kind of zoomed in really fast on the window. It was, it was a very, like, Evil Dead used a lot of shots like that. Um, and... Uh, yeah, and then the window just the window swings open and Lottie starts screaming uncontrollably. Um, oh my God. And I made a list of 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 kind of like Jackie's trying to interpret what's going on here. And first she's just screaming. And then she starts talking and and uh she starts saying it wants, it wants, and hungry. She says hungry, and she kind of laughs really creepily and looks at Shauna and says, it's in you already. And um, then she starts speaking in French and they're like, Jackie, you're in class with French. You're in French class with Lottie. What what is she saying? She's like, I don't know. She sucks at French. (laughs) (laughs) And she's like, and I suck at French too. (laughs) And her translator skills are not great, but she's really trying here. Yeah. And uh, she's like, she said he it it wants something blood more blood stuff here and uh and then she goes by the window and she is she says in english you must spill blood or else so that we have that word spill again spill spill yes and then she slams her head through the window and oh while this is happening through the glass right through the glass and um while this is happening they show Ben downstairs who just starts projectile vomiting. Um, I mean, it looks like a scene out of the exorcist. And or what's that Drew Barrymore Santa Clarita diet where they're just like projectile. She's projectile vomiting. Like I immediately, yeah. immediately thought, Oh my God, Santa Clarita diet. Um, <laughs> yeah. That was some like major projectile vomiting going on. That was a little alarming. Yeah. It, it was like, it almost looked weaponized. <laughs> like weaponized vomit. Yep. But uh, yeah, they cut back upstairs and, and Lottie is just, you know, back to screaming just uncontrollably. And um, Laura Lee runs upstairs with a Bible. Oh, my God. And starts screaming, the power of Christ compels you. And uh, nothing is, nothing is, is she's just not, she's not stopping screaming. And she whips the Bible at her. Oh my God. And and it like snaps Lottie out of the trance, which is crazy. And this is like the second trance she's snapped out of in this episode. First at the beginning in the water when she didn't think it would be that cold. And now this crazy like spirit flying in through the window, speaking in French, whatever, trance. So there is some shit happening with Lottie. Um, yeah. Pretty big time. So I don't know how well this seance plan worked out for Jackie, but I'm going to say not that well. Not that well. And um, yeah, everyone's just kind of stunned. Like, what the fuck just happened? Yep. Absolutely. And then um, we move back to the present and we see um, Thaisa at the press conference Mm -hmm. when we all assume that she's going to be dropping out of the race, as her and Simone had discussed. Um, You know, she's reading the speech she wrote down. She starts with my opponent, Phil Bathurst, but she seems pretty nervous and, um, then she looks back at the cards and sees my opponent spill Bathurst. And we see spill again, you know, third time now we've seen it here. So I thought that yeah. was interesting. And I think seeing that word 
just kind of triggered her, triggered something in her. Big and time trigger. She just immediately switched gears. She turns around and, and smiles at Simone and starts like just being really assertive and, and commanding. And um, she says that uh, Bathurst has been scaring people with, with these lurid taunts and, and his supporters are, are eating it up. And she walks over to the door and takes down the sheet that's covering the word spill and reveals it. And just says someone defaced their home with his disgusting taunt. Um, and, 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 you know, and no matter what gets written on her door, she is staying in the race. Yeah. So, so she started off like basically bringing everybody there to announce that she's dropping out. And, you know, now she's she's in it no matter what, apparently. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So she's in the race and uh, we are back in the past again. Actually, and you know what? I um I'm looking at my notes and I didn't even write this in. And I just remembered we see no we see uh, Michael Jackson dude again in the crowd. Oh! Oh, that's right. You know what? And I did not take a picture of it. And I don't think I have the picture from last time. But now this is the second time we are seeing Michael Jackson, pale guy with no eyes. Mm -hmm. And this would make the second hallucination in this episode because we saw, you know, Ty seeing the wolf as well. So there's clearly some, some things happening in Ty's mind. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of things. Yeah, there are some interesting theories online, interesting fan theories about um, the guy with no eyes and and like what he, how he connects with her that are, uh, that I'm finding really interesting. People have such great insight. I, I love it. They really do. They pick up on things that I tend maybe not to notice or I don't know, even after watching an episode twice, you know, sometimes I'm not picking up on some of these things. So I've really appreciated the Reddit threads, the Facebook groups, Twitter. Yeah. I mean, it's really awesome how great this fandom is and, you know, how into it everyone is with all the conspiracy theories and stuff. So it's it's very cool. Very, very cool fans and very smart. And my dad. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So then we go back to the past and um Ben confronts Misty and he's like, he's like, look at me. You poisoned me. Why did you do that? And she confesses that she has feelings for him. Apparently, you know, Misty thinks that when you have feelings for a guy, you should poison him. <laughs> a little light poisoning, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> Ben... Um, and you know it's really unfortunate that the pet that they just had the seance where the pendulum told Misty that the person she likes likes her back because Oof. Ben, in a very clear attempt to placate her and save his own hide, tells her that he feels the same way, um, and he gets scared sometimes when she gets too close because he wouldn't be able to forgive himself if he ever crossed that line, no matter how much he want might want to. Uh, so unfortunately kind of bad timing there. <laughs> right. And I mean, it, it like puts him in an awkward situation, you know, like where he feels like he's forced to say that just to cope with the situation when, you know, clearly we know, obviously for many different reasons that, um, that he's not into Misty whatsoever. So, you know, good for him for trying to play the reverse psychology there, but, um, yeah, you know, I, I think it was really hard for him to say those words to Misty. Yeah. I mean, I actually, it, it, the first time I watched it, I actually believed him at first. I was like, oh my God, seriously? <laughs> but then I was like, oh no, no, he's just trying to save his own hide. Yeah. Yeah. Smart, smart. Hey, mm -hmm. you got to do what you got to do. You're stuck in the wilderness and uh, with a girl that clearly likes you a little bit too much. So. And is willing to poison you. <laughs> oh my God. And chop off your leg. <laughs> and chop off your leg and sing to you while you're relieving your bowels and squirt you with the lake. Yeah. <laughs> so many different things. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, then everybody else is in bed, um, you know, and uh, Thaisa wants to prove there's nothing to be afraid of. So she actually, you know, goes upstairs and, and goes to sleep upstairs. So, um, but it's funny, like she's not afraid of it, but she also didn't participate in it. So. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but she's just, she seems really put off by any of that supernatural stuff. And 
Um, <sighs> Maybe because it's a little too close to home for her, you know? I mean, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, I think she has some, I think she has trauma from her childhood that involves these supernatural elements. And her way of dealing with that has been to just say, okay, this, this stuff isn't real. Deny, deny, deny. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Because absolutely. she's very much like, you know, as skeptical as they come. Yeah. And I mean, we saw, like, you know, her as a child with her grandmother having the Michael Jackson guy, you know, hallucination situation too. So it's obviously something that's been with her her whole life. It's not, you know, all of a sudden now coming to fruition. It's a lifelong thing for her, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we move back to the present timeline again. And, you know, there's a really great scene um, with Shauna and Callie in the kitchen. And I feel like, you know, Callie feels like this is her opportunity, you know, to approach Shauna and try to, like, get something for her information, you know, essentially blackmail her mom for, you know, having a boyfriend. Mm hmm. Yeah. Don't fuck with Shauna, man. Master of manipulation. <laughs> <laughs> she yep. um yeah she was she kelly just gets really smug and it's like so here's the deal i don't have a curfew anymore and any ubers into the city are going to be no questions asked or else i'll tell dad about your new boyfriend and um shauna says um honey have you ever heard of mutually assured destruction Mm. And then naive Callie says, I basically invented it. Sorry, yes. that might have been your mom. Yeah, because, uh, you know, Callie's feeling pretty proud of herself. But then Shauna, okay, great. Let's chase down exactly what you're proposing. First of all, do you have any idea how much divorce lawyers cost? We're talking five to $600 an hour. So there's about $12,000 in your college fund right now. And yes, I do wish that number sounded less pathetic, but regardless, you can kiss it goodbye. And speaking of that curfew that you're so eager to be free from, you'll be spending your Friday nights in your dad's sad little apartment, eating cold pizza on the sofa you know he cries into. <laughs> and after a few months of that, just when you start to think, okay, dad's taking a little bit better care of himself now, get ready because that is when he's going to come to you for dating advice, which I don't doubt you'll be able to give him because most of those girls will be about your age. But hey, you're the one holding the trump card here. <laughs> oh my God. And like the look on her face the entire time. And then she like, she taunts Callie. She's like, oh, hey, Jeff, hon, will you come here? Callie has something she wants to tell you. So she's basically saying like, okay, hey, take your best shot. You know, you got all the power here, right? And, you know, Jeff comes in, oh, what's going on? And Callie has a complete 180 and says, I snuck into the city last night and I got high and kind of freaked out a little and I had to call mom to give me a ride home. And like, she looks like she wants to cry because all she wanted to do was get unlimited Ubers into the city and not have a curfew. And now she's like, man, my mom is so good. She just owned me, owned yes. me, you know? <laughs> like, I mean, come on, now she's Chris Rock, right? Like, I mean- Shauna committed a murder. <laughs> Oh my God. And, um, and you know, then Jeff, like a disappointed dad. Wow. Cal's that's very disappointing. You know, lying is very uncool. I mean, like we're in the biggest family of liars here ever. So, you know, whatever Jeff has something going on at a hotel and in the inventory database, Sean has got a boyfriend, Callie's, you know, out at a rave. I mean, God, everyone's lying to everybody here. Um, and then, you know, Callie storms out and Jeff says, boy, you were right. She is getting a real attitude. So I thought it was funny. Like Jeff, again, is this like, you know, kind of like a little clueless. I mean, obviously yeah. he's got his own stuff going on, but like literally no clue what's actually happening between his wife and teenage daughter. And I mean, I think it's pretty funny. Um, oh, man. So that was a good scene. I just loved um, Shauna's delivery, the look on her face. Again, Melanie Linsky is just like so good at being Shauna. Oh my God. I it hope really she is. wins an Emmy because she completely deserves it. Um, yes. And after that beaut of a scene, we then go back to the past again. And um, Shauna actually goes upstairs to keep Ty company. And then Ty says, She asks Shauna how far along she is. So mm. she clearly figured it out when she saw Shauna dipping the rag in the deer's blood. And, um, you know, she promises she won't tell anybody, but if they're stuck out there long enough, she has a feeling it'll come out one way or another. 
Yep, absolutely. Um, and, you know, good for Ty for being a friend and, you know, for not telling the group. I think that's, you know, really compassionate of her. Um, and I, it probably feels good for Shauna getting it off of her chest and knowing somebody knows. Um, so she has someone to talk to. I mean, mm-hmm. imagine being a pregnant teenager, like stuck out in the wilderness, not to mention it's, you know, with your best friend's boyfriend, um, you know, as the dad, but like how traumatic that must be. So anyway, it's nice that, you know, they now have this information between them and, and Shauna can go to Ty with that. Yeah. And, and I think this is kind of where we really start to see like, this this blossoming close friendship between Shauna and Taisa, which seems really genuine. Whereas a post it like Jackie and Shauna is more like they've been friends since they were little kids and it's they're very different people and and it's not as it's not as sincere. It's not as genuine. And we kind of see the start of of this friendship between her and Taisa developing in this episode, I think. Yep. And, and, you know, we know in the, in the future timeline, you know, they they don't have that animosity between them like some of the others do. So mm-hmm. um, that was a nice moment. And um, then we come back to our final scene and we are back in the present again. Yeah. Um, so Thaisa comes over to visit Natalie and she's, she's feeling pretty good about herself because she keeps getting phone calls from reporters and um she sees her looking at the crime scene photos and and asks about them and natalie tells her that it's it's the floor of the barn where they found travis's body and the police are saying it's a suicide but there were candles underneath him and she shows how they're arranged and uh she said somebody burned them and took them away um and just as she's explaining this she suddenly gets a text message with the symbol typed out in characters and uh, the message, gather 50K cash and await further instructions. Do not discuss this with your teammates. I will know. Wow. And how did they get that symbol and that text message so well? I need to get that, like, coding to get that symbol text. Yeah. 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 That That's, uh, yeah, that must have took some time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, this is when we um, we start to realize, like, there's some some blackmail at play here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, and you know, we find out something interesting. It we flash over to Misty, who is watching this unfold via surveillance, um, eating popcorn on her couch. And the we find out there's a hidden camera in the aroma diffuser. With the Lang Lang and Gardenia in it. Um, yes. Very citizen detective spy of Misty, you know, spying on them. And and really that look on her face with the eating the popcorn, very self-satisfied, you know, like, ooh, mm-hmm. I'm getting some good information here. Um, so, yeah. And she, it's, she seems like she's really enjoying it until she hears Ty call her a conniving poodle-haired little freak. Yes. Oh, little fucking freak. Oh, little fucking freak. Sorry. Let's not forget the F word. That's very important. <laughs> a conniving poodle haired little fucking freak. Yes. Um, yes. And and uh, with that, the episode ended. Um, and wow, what an episode it was. Yeah. Sets up a lot of questions, doesn't it? It does. As always happens, right? We get an answer to something and then, you know, another question comes up. Um and, you know, we recapped our favorite songs, Montel Jordan, This Is How We Do It. We both loved that choreographed dance routine at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, you loved the 90s dance moves, The Running Man and Bart Simpson. I yes. loved the 90s mention of Daria. And, um, again, my most likely, too, was Misty uh, solving a puzzle on Survivor uh, for coming up with that crime scene symbol situation. And um, you, uh, for Kelly, most likely to get slapped at the Academy Awards for being offensive. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, and next week's episode is Saints. And the description from that episode is, the girls tangle with the birds and the bees, navigating love, lust, and DIY surgery. In the present, blackmail, bunnies, and an icy reunion. Misty prepares for a house guest. So, yeah, it's a it's a good it's a good episode too. God, this whole show is just so brilliant. It's like covering the show like this just every week. I think, oh my god, this this has to be like one of the best episodes of the season. And then I just say it every week. 
you know? <laughs> yep, yep. I can't wait for Doom coming. You know, you had this really great idea that we should dress up for it. And um, I've started <laughs> assembling my costume. I actually found this like wood crown on my local buy nothing group. And I went and picked it up this week. And it's literally like a crown that these people found camping in the woods. And it, it is like so perfect. I can't wait, you know, to debut that for doom coming episode um hey, hey you know what maybe awesome. maybe if if any other fans out there want to get a costume together they can pop on in their their best uh doom coming outfit yeah. i don't know just a thought just a thought yeah get like you know a, a, get some uh some twig know, flower some crowns and flower sticks. crowns like yeah yeah there's there's lots of fun stuff you could do I can't um, wait for Doom coming. It's probably my favorite episode of the season. I know we're still a few out here, but I'm just, I'm so excited to cover that one. Yeah. I, I would love for, I would love for uh, a fan or two to join us and, and just show up in a really awful, awful costume. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Like just, <laughs> like just you know, the, the worse, the better. Just like put some hangers on your head and wrap toilet paper around or something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We'll have to, you know, even if we don't get people to pop on, we'll have to get people to tag us in their Doom Coming photos. Um, yeah. And, you know, speaking of Doom Coming, we also have a yeah. Doom Coming shirt design at antlerqueenspodcast.com, along with some other fun ones, including our peace, love, and yellow jackets. There's no book club and um, a whole slew of other ones. Let's see. We've got some fun mugs. We've got some um, you know, yellow jackets, high school gear, um, all kinds of fun stuff. So again, go check that out at antlerqueenspodcast.com. Yeah. And um, I think with that, we're, you know, we're, we're done covering the episode, but we are now going to move into our spoiler segment. All right. So let's give everybody a little countdown here. Um, our spoiler segment, just to recap, is we're going to talk about things that we already know in future episodes without spoiling it for you if you haven't watched. So if you have not watched Beyond Episode 5, Blood Hive, turn the podcast off, go walk away, pause it, whatever you want to do. If you're just joining, um, this is spoilers, so do not listen unless you are okay with being spoiled for future Yellow Jackets episodes. Okay, we are safely in the spoiler zone. All right. Okay. First for me was... You know, we talked about this during the episode, but when Lottie was in the lake and she tells Jackie she thought it would be warmer, and then we had the other comment in there, you know, about, um, you know, how cold it is. And, you know, for me, I immediately thought, okay, this is totally foreshadowing Jackie's death. We know that she dies by freezing. We are like 99% sure she dies. I mean, I guess maybe she could have survived being frozen outside, but it didn't look like it to me. I no. think some people are holding out hope, but I think she's safely gone. Yeah. Um. So anyway, you know, all these little temperature comments, I think are little nods, you know, to how we do know that, that Jackie dies. You know, that, that was a, a good observation that I hadn't thought about before that, that her being in the lake could be foreshadowing for her death. And I that I hadn't pondered that before. And but what's interesting is, you know, Jackie is the one that that popped up there. And um I think that's intentional, right? I mean, they could yeah. have had anybody else come up and hear that line from Lottie, but it was Jackie. And you um, you know, and then you you commented that she was broken out of Lottie was like broken out of this trance state twice. And the other person who broke her out of the trance state in this episode was Laura Lee. Oh, and of course, we know Laura Lee also perishes when she finally does take the airplane and, you know, it explodes in midair. So mm -hmm. um, that's fascinating. You know, I didn't think of that either. So I think those were slight intentional nods towards, you know, characters that we know aren't going to be with us anymore. And that really makes me think, God, am I missing other ones, too? Um, I mean, I don't know, but... You know, in speculating who's going to be alive um, for next season, too, we had talked a little bit about on Twitter this week about, you know, Lottie, we can probably assume is alive, yes. given that it's the cult likely behind Travis's death and Nat's kidnapping. Um, There's no way Van's dead. I mean, after how many times she survived? <laughs> 
Right. I mean, and she really is like the Energizer Bunny, right? Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, if we're talking about future casting, um, you know, for Lottie, I feel like, I don't know, Rosario Dawson, Vanessa Lachey, maybe Danica McKellar, Alyssa Milano, maybe, but I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm totally going with, with Shannon Sossman on that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. She looks, she looks a lot like her. Um, she's, I, I think she'd be a good fit for that. But I swear to God, they they need to get Julia Stiles to play Van. Absolutely. That's like my number one hope is Julia Stiles. But if not, you know, Lauren Ambrose from, you know, yeah. Six Feet Under and some other amazing shows. Um, I think she would also be be really great. So, you know, why don't you visit our Twitter uh, at the Antler Queens and tell us, you know, who do you think should play present day Lottie, present day Van or any other characters you think that are still alive in the future who we haven't seen? I love casting. They've done such a good job. So it's a, a fun little game to play. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, it, well, before the show, before the season ended, I had this theory when Van got attacked by by the wolf. Um, they ended it. I think most of us thought she was dead. Did you think she? Did you? Think oh, she was I one hundred percent thought she died. I was shocked that she yeah. actually survived. And for me, it was a little suspension of disbelief because I'm thinking there's no way that she would survive a the attack and b like the plastic surgery in the middle of the wilderness like and she got lit on fire (laughs) oh oh yes and lit on fire I mean gosh it's but uh I you know when that episode ended after she got attacked I assumed she was dead and I I started forming this theory in my head relating to the girl's jersey numbers because Van is Van's number is one and I was like, that's interesting. Van was the first one to die and her jersey number is one, but she survived. Hmm. Um, Ooh, tell so, me more about jersey numbers, Kelly. Yeah, and, and Laura Lee is number two. Oh my God. Um, what number is Jackie? Jackie is nine. nine. So it, it, that kind of throws a wrench into it too. I mean, unless she survived, but I mean, she <laughs> looked like a complete popsicle. Like she yeah, was really, like, totally there's, there's dead. no way, there's no way she could have survived, but interesting number nine. But hmm. I even started, like, I noticed that there was no three and four. And then I was like, well, Ben has three letters in his name and Javi has four letters. <laughs> like, I'm just getting, I started getting so convoluted with it. <laughs> Oh my God. You know what we should do? We should make, um, we should make a list of all the numbers and the roster and see if we can come up with some patterns. I mean, we should throw it out there. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Like maybe there's some like prime number things or like multiples of threes, or I mean, I don't know, sacred trigonometry situations, but let's, let's make a list. I think you're onto something here. That is really, really smart. Yeah. Yeah. I was, but you know, I was so happy the fan survived because I was, I was crushed. Um, when I thought she, she had died. But then I was like, well, hmm, that kind of puts a kink in the theory, but. It does. And you know what? Real quick, we didn't highlight one of Van's great quotes oh, in yeah. this episode. <laughs> when when they were having the seance, Um, you know, uh, she said, your mom and I are splitting up, but don't worry because your tits are going to look amazing when they were, um, <laughs> you know, talking about, uh, what, God, what were they talking about? One of their friend's parents or something. What, yeah, they. I think they had asked uh, the pendulum if um, if some girl's boobs were fake. And, uh, you know, they're like, oh, come on. Yeah, it's totally obvious. And and somebody suggested that her dad paid for it after her parents got divorced. <laughs> yes. Yep. That's what it was. That was funny. I enjoyed that quote. Yeah. Um, and then like one more spoilery thing for me, which we've kind of touched upon is, you know, um, like the supernatural stuff, right? Like when people describe yellow jackets, I feel like they will say, you know, it's kind of like Lord of the Flies meets Lost for Taylor Swift fans. And of course, you know, Lost is very well known for many different supernatural things. And in this episode specifically, when they had all that really crazy exterior camera work and they made it seem like there was like a spirit coming through the window, um, you know, one of the big fan theories is about... um, the word that you're not supposed to actually say out loud. So I'm not going to say it. I'm going to spell it. Um, it is W-E-N-D-I-G-O. 
Um, and according to Algonquin oral traditions, uh, this thing, or actually it can also be spelled W-I-N-D-I-G-O, sorry, uh, is a cannibalistic monster that preys on the weak and socially disconnected. In most versions of the legend, a human becomes a W word after his or her spirit is corrupted by greed or weakened by extreme conditions such as hunger and cold. In other legends, humans become the W word when they're possessed by a prowling spirit during a moment of weakness. And, you know, I guess this, um, this supernatural situation, you know, is in different cultures and, and languages and different things. But, um, you know, is it, is this what's happening? Like, are they going to, you know, honor this W word legend? Is it something totally different? Um, you know, I think, it's, I think it's interesting. Like clearly something came through that window and possessed Lottie, right? I mean, yeah. she was very, very much in some kind of a trance and, and that camera work I think was very telling. Yeah. And, and we saw that, um, I think, was it the episode before, I think when, uh, or maybe it was a couple weeks ago, um, when they were walking to the lake and we saw Thaisa looking around, like they showed a, a camera point of view, like somebody was watching them. Yes. Um, yeah. And we've seen that camera point of view, I think maybe a couple other times, like out in the woods, just, you know, implicating that something is there with them or somebody mm -hmm. is watching. So I think, you know, as we go each episode, you know, kind of untangling the supernatural, not supernatural, like what's happening out there. I think some people are excited about it. You know, a lot of people really liked that element of lost. A lot of people, you know, may not want the show to take that twist and, you know, keep it authentic. So it's going to be really interesting to see how it all eventually comes together with whatever the F is going on out there in the woods. Yeah. And, and I'm hoping, I mean, I think that this show has done a good job so far being sensitive about certain issues and I, I kind of trust them to not get, I, I, I do have some concerns about, the whole supernatural versus Lottie's mental illness thing. Um, but I, 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 I don't think that they would pull this off in a way that would be insensitive. I, I, I have trust in them. I think they'll go the right direction. I agree. I mean, in this day and age, you know, with sensitivity to mental health and, you know, trauma and not victim blaming and all that sort of stuff, um, you know, my feeling is is like yours. I think that they'll be very sensitive to that because there clearly, you know, are some mental health things happening there. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, I also, I, I think, have that that same trust, um, you know, again, especially in today's day and age. So, yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, having that supernatural element, I think is, is a positive thing. Um, you know, it's at first, I, I personally kind of think things based more in reality are a little more fun, but because they're scarier, but, yes. um, but yeah, I, I would just, I, I think the supernatural element works really well. And, and it kind of, you know, gives a nice commentary on like, we don't have to always make the, the, person that has mental health issues, the, the, the villain here, like their mental health issues are causing nope. this behavior. There's other stuff going on. Yep, absolutely. And, and, you know, I think it's important that we keep that dialogue open as we discuss these things throughout the podcast. And, um, you know, it, it, it's very important for our fans and, and for the writers. And so, It'll be very interesting to see what happens in season two. Um, and, you know, one more spoilery type thing, you know, quick. Um, you know, this episode we learn, you know, Shauna is pregnant. And mm -hmm. we've completely ruled out that Callie is the baby from the woods. Um, yeah. You know, there have been a lot of fans speculating that Callie might be that baby. But if you do the math, it's not even possible. I mean, she's in high school and it's 25 years later. So you just, you know, you do some quick math and realize, you know, Callie is not the baby. Um, mm -hmm. And we also know that they don't eat the baby. The writers have said that they will not eat the baby <laughs> on the show. So that's another thing that we can rule out when it comes to Shauna's baby. Um, yes. what, what we can't rule out is, you know, is the baby actually born, right? Like we know that she tries to perform a self-inflicted abortion, you know, in one of the episodes, which is hard to watch. Um, 
is the baby born? Is it not? I mean, yeah. like, where, where did the baby go? Odds of survival, pretty slim. But you know what I just, what I just realized when we first saw the photos on Jeff and Shauna's walls in their home, we saw their wedding picture. Was she pregnant? I almost kind of, I almost feel like I remember her being pregnant in the photo and I just didn't think about it at the time. You know what? That's a good question. We should totally pull that. And now that you mentioned that, I remember there was a thread in one of the Facebook groups about um, that same thing, the family photos on the wall. And I feel like somebody said there was a picture with young Jeff and Shauna with another baby or, or yeah. there was like another baby in one of the pictures that they deduced was not Callie. So we need to like get our citizen detective skills on and, and show some of these screen grabs in one of our spoilers here. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I, I think it's there, you know what, also there in one of the episodes, Shauna is, is Googling herself and she comes across, like, I, I kept pausing it um, while she was Googling, like, trying to see what she was looking at on the screen. And I did see that the wedding announcement was on there. So I need to go back and look at that. I wonder if there's a date mentioned Ooh, as to when they got married. That is a good idea. Let's figure that out. And let's also get that roster of jersey numbers and yeah. players and see what kind of pattern we can come up with. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Homework assignments, homework assignments. Yes, yes, 100%. I love it. Um, there's, yeah, God, it's like I've watched the show so many times now and I'm still going back to look for things. Same, same. I mean, that and, and the Reddit and Facebook threads. Like I am, again, just continually impressed by the fans and, you know, all of the intuitiveness and clue solving and, and all that stuff. Um, I mean, this is just such a good show. I mean, I know I say this every time and obviously I love it, right? We have a podcast about it, but, um, yeah. man, I mean, what a good show. I love yellow jackets. I love yellow jackets. I cannot wait for season two, Kelly. Like when are they going to give us a season two date? Oh my God. It, yeah, I, I need it now. I mean, like the walking dead is, is, you know, going to be over forever and yellow jackets has really kind of, I think replaced it at this point for my my favorite tv show and oh my god yeah i don't want to wait till november <laughs> yeah no i i can't wait i am so excited and you know the other question i posed on twitter was should we put the symbol on our merch or should we wait until we find out what it means <laughs> so go to our Twitter at the Antler Queens and chime in, you know, like, would you buy it? Would you wear the symbol? I mean, people are getting the symbol tattooed on them as mentioned before. Um, so anyway, yeah. I, I, I can't wait to learn what the symbol means. I'm just, you know, along with uh, who's the Antler Queen, who's Pit Girl and, you know, some other, some other questions as well. Oh my God. So many things. Yes. Um, and well, with that, I think we've covered Blood Hive episode five very comprehensively. However, if we did miss anything or you've got some insights, please drop a comment and let us know. Um, connect with us anytime. We are at theantlerqueens.com. Our merch is at antlerqueenspodcast.com. And we are on all the socials, so you can find us there. Um, and we'll be back next week covering episode six, Saints. Yep. All right. Another good one. Yes. And, you know, we talked about not doing our little sign-off, but one of our Twitter friends said that they really liked it, and they used the hashtag, so I think we should go back to it again. Okay. Okay. I think that's a good idea. All right. Hey, hey, Kelly. Hey, what? Buzz off. Buzz off. All right. Antler Queens are out. Thank you, everybody.